Hello viewers, I'm Bob. In this video, I will be showing you the solution to finding the McClory series of sine inverse x using the formula shown in the top right hand corner. But before I do so, if you guys like the solution, let me press the thumbs up icon below this video. We can actually express the McClory series of sine inverse x using the formulas shown in the top right hand corner of the screen, in which a function can be expressed as an infinite series as shown in the right hand side of the equation, in which my f0 is the function evaluated at x equals 0, f prime 0 is the function differentiated once and evaluating at x equals 0, and then we have f double prime 0 is the function differentiated twice, f triple prime 0 is the function differentiated three times, and f four times prime 0 is the function differentiated four times, all of which uh, evaluating at x equals 0. We will be expressing the McCoy series of sine inverse x up to and including the x to the power of 4 terms in this video. We first start off by expressing my function of x be equals to sine inverse x. And then we work on finding the f prime x differentiating fx one time. We basically have 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Next, we differentiate the function one more time to get f double prime x, in which my f prime x is just 1 minus x squared to the power of negative half. We get the following, negative half 1 minus x squared to the power of negative 3 over 2, and then we differentiate the inside, which is 1 minus x squared, we get negative 2x. And then we simplify the whole thing, and we get just x1 minus x squared to the power of negative 3 over 2 as my f double prime x. Moving on, we evaluate what is my f triple prime x by differentiating f double prime x one time. For this part, we have to apply the product rule of differentiation first. We worked on keeping x and differentiating 1 minus x squared to the power of negative 3 over 2. We get the following, negative 3 over 2. 1 minus x squared to the power of negative 5 over 2, differentiating the inside, which is 1 minus x squared, you get negative 2x. Then we differentiate x, we get 1, and then we keep the 1 minus x squared to the power of negative 3 over 2. We then simplify the first term of f triple prime x, we get the following, which is just, I think it is 3x squared. 1 minus x squared to the power of negative 5 over 2 plus 1 minus x squared to the power of negative 3 over 2. Last but not least, we worked on finding the f 4 times prime x, basically by differentiating f triple prime x one more time. So for the first term of f triple prime x, we will also have to use the product rule of differentiation. First, keeping 3x squared, and then we differentiate 1 minus x squared to the power of negative 5 over 2, and we get the following. Negative 5 over 2, 1 minus x squared to the power of negative 7 over 2. Differentiating 1 minus x squared, we get to negative 2x. And then as for the second part of the product rule, for the first term of the f triple prime x, we just have... The following, differentiating 3x squared, we get 6x. Uh, we then have 1 minus x squared to the power of negative 5 over 2. And then as for the second term of the f triple prime x, we just have the following, which is negative 3 over 2, 1 minus x squared to the power of negative 5 over 2. And differentiating 1 minus x squared, we get just negative 2x. In which, if we were to simplify this a little bit further, we will have the following answer. 15x cubed, 1 minus x squared to the power of negative 7 over 2, plus 6x, 1 minus x squared to the power of negative 5 over 2. And then as for the last term, we will just have 3x, 1 minus x squared to the power of negative 5 over 2. Now we have found what is my fx, f prime x, f double prime x, f triple prime x, f four times prime x. We can now evaluate what is my f0. So first of all, to find my f0, I substitute x equals 0 into fx. We get just sine inverse 0. Sine inverse 0 is just 0. How about f prime 0 substituting x equals 0 into f prime x? We will basically just have 1. 
So my f prime zero is just basically equals to one. For f double prime zero substituting x equals to zero into f double prime x, we have the following. Basically, it's just zero. x equals to zero into f triple prime x. For the first term is zero. You can work it out yourself. And then for the second term itself, we basically just have one. Last but not least, substituting x equals to zero into f four times prime x gives me zero because all the terms itself basically our numerator of the terms are zero we have now found why is my f0 f prime zero f double prime zero f triple prime zero f four times prime zero i can apply the formula shown in the top right hand corner of this video to find the maclaurin series of sine inverse x so the maclaurin series of sine inverse x can be approximated to be for the first term of the Maclaurin series is zero. And then for the second term, basically it's just x one over one factorial. For the third term of the Maclaurin series is zero because my f double prime zero is zero. And then for the fourth term is just, we have x cubed one over three factorial. And for the fifth term, because my f four times prime zero is zero. And hence for the fifth term itself is zero. So which means there's no x to the power of four terms. We have the final answer. The Maclaurin series of sine inverse x can be approximated up to including the x to the power of four terms. It's just x plus x cubed over six. I hope you guys like this video. If you guys do, press the thumbs up icon below this video and do consider to subscribe for Maclaurin series problem. I'm Bob. Thank you guys for your support and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye, guys.